Well, I was browsing through my news feed and I came across this article that just completely blew my mind. Just the fact that they continually don't get it. And it turns out that the CEO of Disney is wanting to essentially keep doing what is causing them to consistently fail and bomb at the box office, which is inserting these uh, liberal SJW LGBT ideologies into their kids' movies. You know, great idea. You know, the, the definition of insanity is trying the same thing over and over and over and expecting different results. But it, apparently it goes over their head. This is on uh, this is on uh, CN, uh, CNBC. It says, uh, Disney CEO Bob Iger addresses Don't Say Gay Fallout, importance of LGBTQ inclusion in the stories. This was posted uh, Monday, November 28th of 2022. It says, uh, Disney CEO Bob Iger answered employee questions during a 45-minute town hall with employees. Iger's comments come on the heels of two major controversies cent uh, centered on Disney's handling of LGBTQ issues during Bob Chapek's short time as head of, of head of the company. Because if you don't know, back in May, there was like this whole thing where Florida came up with this bill banning uh, the homosexualization of, of, of basically preteen children. And uh, Disney was, was pressured by their employees to come out and oppose it. It was a big thing. It was like all over the news back when it back in May of, of this year, 2022. But it says here in the article, uh, following criticism of its past handling of LGBTQ issues, Disney CEO Bob Iger on Monday told employees that inclusion and acceptance were among the core values of the company's storytelling. Yeah, the, the exact thing that is causing the flop at the box office over and over and over again. That's your core values, apparently. Uh, the remarks come after Disney has faced criticism under previous CEO Bob Chapek for its handling of Florida's Don't Say Gay Bill, which banned instruction on sexual orientation and gender identity in kindergarten through uh, third grade. Okay, I have a question. Why are kindergartners having to learn about sexual orientation and gender identity? You know, if a kid is not old enough to choose what religion he is or, you know, choose essentially, uh, essentially choose anything, you know, if he can't drink alcohol, for example, what makes you think he should be able to learn about sexual orientation, and gender identity? See, the law is simply just, you know, protecting kids, you know, until they're old enough to, to just understand this kind of stuff. But of course, the groomers don't want to uh, don't want to bring that up, of course. But basically, Disney's recent inclusion of uh, unambiguously gay characters in animated films has also drawn criticism from anti anti LGBTQ activists. Well, yeah, of course, because people don't want uh, this inserted in their kids' films. And the only people who really do are just a small minority who of these blue-haired feminists on the internet who just are offended at everything. But just normal people see these, these blue-haired feminists on the internet who just are offended and just triggered over everything. These transgenders and everything else. They're not the minority. They're just an they're, they're not the majority, I, I was going to say. They're just a loud and annoying minority on the internet and on Twitter and Facebook and everything else. But they don't represent the majority of people who will pay to watch Disney films. But it says here in the article, uh, this company has been telling stories for one, this is basically what the CEO is saying, this company has been telling stories for 100 years, and those stories have a meaningful positive impact on the world. And yeah, is that why they keep getting banned in China and Saudi Arabia and everything else? Because they got a positive impact on the world? Give me a break. Uh, one of the reasons they have a meaningful positive impact is because of our, one of the core values of storytelling is inclusion and acceptance and tolerance. We can't lose that, Iger, Iger said on Monday. Yeah, well, you can't lose that, but you're you're, you're going to keep losing uh, your return on investments and you know any kind of financial gain from your films because they continually bomb at the box office. So you don't want to lose your your acceptance and tolerance, but at what cost? You know, which is your films bombing at the box office. Iger also said that some subjects have been proven to be controversial and shouldn't be political. Well, it'd be kind of nice if they wouldn't insert all these identity politics into their films, but. Uh, you know, essentially it's projection, but he says uh, in the article going on, I don't think when you're telling stories and attempting to be a good citizen of the world, that's political. Uh, again, is that why your films keep getting banned in all these other countries in Asia? Because, you know, whatever. I mean, it, it's just a bunch of insanity. He says, according to sources who uh, heard the event, it asked to remain anonymous because it was not open to the public. With the Florida bill, Chapek said he had immediately decided not to speak out on the measure because he wanted to work behind the scenes to engage with, to engage with lawmakers. However, his silence led to many opponents of the bill to believe that Disney was being complacent. Well, of course, because these, these these woke SJW you know uh, lunatic, lunatics basically are never satisfied. Either you have to just go with everything they do, or else. Though, though I've seen stuff they'll say Disney supports homophobia. 
because if you don't pander to them all the time, no matter what you do for them in the past, they're just never satisfied. They always have to have more and more and more. That's why you should never bow the knee to them. You know, don't back down, double down further. But he says, um, Chapek later, later come out against the bill. His statements angered Florida lawmakers, including Governor Ron DeSantis, leading the state to pass a bill that would dissolve Disney's uh, Reedy Creek Improvement District, uh, which uh, was established in 1967, so that the company could develop infrastructure and be primarily responsible for the cost of municipal services such as power, water, and fire protection. And of course, DeSantis is uh, making rustling, rustling some feathers over in the, the higher ups of Disney over that, but. Basically, what's going on is that his, you know, solution, you know, his, essentially his vision uh, when he, as he's returning as CEO is to just keep doing what's causing the flop at the box office. Real good, you know, you know round of applause for that. Uh, so you're going to keep losing more and more money, keep failing to make a return on your profits and investments. Uh, but we've got to do this in the name of tolerance and be a good, you know, uh, you know, uh, what is it, you know, good, uh, pushing good values. Hence why our films keep getting banned in other countries, like, you know, uh, like say, and of course I'm not promoting China or Saudi Arabia, you know, giving it, you don't, don't, no one accuse me that, of that, but it's just, it's just funny how they just can't see how they're going to keep doing that. They're going to keep flopping and then just think that, well, we're just going to keep doing the same thing over and over again and expect different results, which like I said at the beginning is the definition of insanity. So anyway, just wanted to point that out. It's pretty funny how they just don't get it. But at the same time too, you know, when you're run by this insane, just SJW wokeness, What's to, what, what more is to be expected? So anyway, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.